And I'm the author and illustrator of Olivia's Birds, Saving the Gulf. Well, my passion for the environment and all animals really comes from everywhere. My grandparents really have contributed and showed me how to love birds, and my parents are really compassionate about the environment. We have always kind of been connected to nature. Well, it's kind of hard not to get interested in birds when you're exposed to them nearly every day. And they're just engineered so perfectly and de designed so specifically for flight. It's amazing. I mean, they have hollow bones, no teeth for the fact that they have to be lighter, um, tightened up tailbones. And they really are really interesting, and they really have always, ever since I was little, I've always been kind of captivated at how can a bird fly if it doesn't have two turbojet engines taped to its sides. I was inspired to write my book by the awful oil spill this past April. It was so devastating to me and so heart-wrenching that I had to help. I wanted to donate some time and anything I could offer to the Audubon Society. After I contacted the Audubon Society, we discussed how people would donate to, to them for the Gulf recovery efforts and I would send them a drawing of a bird. Ultimately, after all is said and done and still going on, I have raised over $150,000 and done over 500 illustrations, which has made my book possible. I have been painting ever since I was very little, so little that I can't even really remember. Nobody has really taught me to paint, but my mom has been a real inspiration for me. I try to follow her in her footsteps and the fact that she is really someone I looked up to in the artist sense. One of the things that really excites me is all the fan mail that I get on my Facebook page and in the mail. Bill Clinton sent me a letter, and it's definitely the coolest and one of my faves. What I do when I'm not painting is I, I love jamming on my alto saxophone and just playing around with my brother. He's really awesome. Well, what I want to be when I grow up is an ornithologist, which is a um, scientist of birds, and a falconer, which means I get to handle birds of prey or crippled birds and train them so maybe they can be rehabilitated and released into the wild. I have really dedicated my life to birds because they are so unique and wonderful, and I feel very strongly about pursuing this in the future. Hi, peoples and students, but that's the same, isn't it? Um, uh, come on. As you can see, this is my favorite little brother, and my only one, so technically he has to be my favorite. So uh, he, he grew out his hair a little different. But anyway, the environment is still an issue. I know it's been an issue ever since, I don't know when, because I'm only 12. But... <laughs> It's really still an issue that's continuing to grow, and it's not going to go away unless we, the people who are, you know, in the world right now, unless we step up to the platform and change it. I know it's like, you know, let the people, the EPA, handle it, but, you know, they can't do it without our support because every little thing matters, you know, putting out some bird seed, recycling, Everything counts. Kurt Vonnegut said, we, we live as if there's no tomorrow, so there will be none. Sorry, Daisy, there won't be a prom next year. You know, it's really important to think about that because Rachel Carson said that how many years ago? And that was like 50. And the problem is still here. My mom always said when she was 10, she had an energy crisis at her age, and now she's looking at her 10-year-old, which is me. I'm actually 12 now, though. And uh, she's saying we haven't made much progress. So 
There's nothing to be said about that. But while I've been here, since I've been on Long Island, you know, a little bit of a trek, but still awesome because I'm hanging out with you guys. So, you know, it's really, I had the pleasure to go to the Academy of Sciences, that uh, museum that's pretty awesome. I got to go behind the scenes and learn about biodiversity in our environment because biodiversity is a key to a lot of things, you know. It's like the building blocks of our entire world. It's like a big Lego. I know everybody knows Legos. I love Legos. All right. So it's like a big Lego building. And we're taking out little pieces every hour because 24 species are lost every hour of, you know, worldly species. So we're taking out lots of pieces here and there. And soon it's going to be so unstable and it's going to topple. So, you know, it's important for people, even as short as me, or as young as me in this case, or even Jackson, you know, he raised $800 for Project Puffin. Good brother. But the point is, whether it's $800, like $800 to $200,000, which is what he raised as an ultimate total, which I think is pretty awesome, because I wasn't expecting that at all. But anyway... You know, it's important that everybody from this height to this height can make do the little things because the little flutters of a wing can lead up to a whole worldwide flight of economical and ecological movement because the eco-economy is growing and renewable energy, as my dad has you know demonstrated because he designs zero-energy houses, which is pretty cool, um, you know, it's still growing and it's still important because we're not going to have oil forever and you know even if you're not advocating for clean energy or doing things little things can make a huge difference and doing your part is pretty fantastic so what, what the video My brother Jackson and I recently visited Four Seasons Resort in Costa Rica. Costa Rican ornithologist Pablo Elizondo joined us on our trip. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning everybody. Pura vida. Uh, we're going to one of the nicest places to see a bird. So hopefully we get to see a lot. Costa Rica chose to invest in preserving the environment. They even pay landowners to maintain natural habitat instead of cutting their trees. There are over 850 species of birds in Costa Rica, and many migrate to and from the United States. Some of the birds we saw on our trip were the white-throated magpie jay, the orange-fronted parakeet, spring kingfishers, and many species of heron. is important for its biodiversity. From bats to iguanas, even the treacherous crocodile, each animal has its niche in the environment. <laughs> I 
was excited to meet with other kids to talk about birds. We are now at the school of Costa Rica school children. I am very excited. <laughs> And thanks to a grant from the YSA at Disney Center Chain, we were able to give the students copies of my book, Olivia's Bird. children and I swear that was the best. Uh, that was really pure bliss if there isn't any. To give them those smiles and to be able to draw those birds and give them something and see their faces and kisses and hugs and them pushing aside the book. That was just that was just miraculous, I think, for me as an experience. That they really wanted to help. They thanked me so many times and came up to me twice afterwards. It was amazing. On this trip, I learned that kids all around the world love birds and want to make a difference. You know, it really is up to you, you know. Cancer or caterpillars, we can all show our presence that we have been gifted because we are on this earth and we are house guests, you know. There's other people and birds and animals on this earth. And, you know, we've been very messy. There's no other way around that, you know. Oil here and trash over there, you know. Ultimately, I think it's time for us to clean up because we are the ones with the hands and the heads and a bunch of other cool stuff. And, you know, everybody probably has an iPhone or something like that, you know, it's helpful. But, you know, it's we are the change makers. We make the change that we want to see in the world. So go birds. Go birds.